John Dami made the beat and I'm gon' kill it. Y'all got them kids ready to go back to school? Yeah. Look at Hell no, nah, that shit came back fast and fuck. <laughs> nigga, look at that. Total, y'all total kids, y'all got them next week, y'all don't lie. Shit. All the niggas in here like, nigga, ready, nigga, ready, ready, nigga, ready, ready. Get the fuck out the house, nigga, I'm ready, ready. Fuck that, I ain't ready because I buy all my niece and nephews shit, so that shit Me too. Up. Uncle, I got school, bitch, man. Shit, it's still summertime, this ain't gonna swim now. Bruh, my son's <laughs> school dirty as hell. I done did all this damn school shopping. They talking about some uniform. I'm like, shit. That's the best. No, it ain't. Yes, it is. Yeah. By eight of them crackers, you be like, get out my face. Eight crackers. And that's the ones. Body. Shit, but you can't just run off them eight khakis because you send your kids to school with khakis on. They come back with, like, they've been working on cars. They're like, what the fuck? Well, what the fuck did you do today, my nigga? They're going to be looking like they work on cars We, we went day. outside. You put them bitches in the washing machine. That shit don't never come out. Like, what kind of dirt on y'all playground? Hey, man. That would be the day you would have been a mechanic in my house. Keep going. Keep going. Hey, all the, all the real parents <laughs> in here going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Hey, your kids ever come home from school so hungry you get mad at the goddamn school? <laughs> What, baby, you ate 20 nuggets. What y'all have for lunch? The shit they tell you they have for lunch make you want to take off and go up there. We had spaghetti with peanut butter soup. What the fuck is peanut butter soup? <laughs> These motherfuckers is tripping. Much money I sent to that goddamn school. They motherfuckers talking about some peanut butter soup. My son was so goddamn hungry, he couldn't even take a nap. They don't want to wait till you get home. They be hungry in the goddamn car. Mom, please, please, mom, stop it, Matt Dawes. I swear, I've been reading books. I, I'm so hungry, mom, please. You stop, you like, you think something wrong with your baby. Baby, you all right? <laughs> what you want? I want 20 nuggets, two cheeseburgers, chicken sandwich. You don't even feel comfortable letting your baby on. You don't gotta get, get whatever you want, baby, shit. <laughs> Nigga, my son came home from school one day and ate six slices of a large pizza. I threw the other two away. I said, it's child abuse if I let you eat all this goddamn pizza. <laughs> the fuck is you a ninja turtle? How the fuck? I'm a grown ass man. Where the fuck do you put six slices of pizza? I got the shit after the first two. <laughs> this goddamn cheese. And how you cheese. still up? Yeah. Nigga done snuck, he snuck and drunk a 32 pack of Capri Sun. I ain't even never see the little nigga come out the room. Only black kids can sneak and drink 32 or something. I told you parents be going through it. We don't get no credit for this shit. Uh, talking about you gotta be poor to get some food stamp. Fuck that. If you got some kids in your house, everybody needs a goddamn food stamp. Real nigga, shit. even dope boys can't feed. You nigga, if you got two 12 year olds, you don't never get shit to eat. These niggas eat leftovers. They eat the shit that's in the freezer. Snacks. They eat the shit that you was about to throw away. Everything. Pizza bites, all types of shit. Nigga, my nephew spent the night over my house. This nigga was eating bacon faster than I could cook it. Listen, we gotta put this shit on YouTube. Ain't nobody gonna believe it. <laughs> they starving our black kids out here. You, I, I'm sorry. I keep going. I, I, I feel that your pain. That was some, yeah. going through something. Yeah, Tell it. What? Nigga, but, this homework hard than a motherfucker. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what grade your kids in. They sending some shit home that you don't fucking know. <laughs> Tell it. Tell it. The homework hard than a motherfucker. They got this other man that ain't even like the regular man. Like, yeah. two minus one equals six. How the fuck y'all get this shit? Cause then you gotta make two twos and two ones, and then you gotta show the ones, mama and the daddy, where the two came from. So then you gotta have another one and another one. Then you gotta have zero plus one to show how you got the fucking one. Add all this shit up, two minus one, 136. How the fuck we supposed to figure this shit out? Hey, this nigga Carlos Salaghi. They sending our kids home with the wrong shit, and if we tell them the right shit, we wrong? Talk your shit, Lord. You got some shit on your chest, this, nigga. This, this Run nigga, for president. He had this to tell home so me. goddamn hard. You had to really be a parent. Run you for just president. look at your baby and say, baby, 
do the best you can because you teach on some bullshit. I work downtown. You don't need to know this shit. Don't let them white people trick you, baby. Two minus one is one all goddamn day. Just do what they say do, and if you get it wrong, God bless them and motherfucker. Um, Only a black parent will tell you that. This is the town yeah. hall meeting, nigga. Let's the it. town hall meeting. We on a panel. This is the town yeah. hall meeting. Tell Tell the black shit. Mamas, where are the black mamas? What about the transportation, Los? What about the you transportation? You ever had to go off on the goddamn school for sending too much shit home? And then you, they send some shit, you get petty. You send some shit back. Every goddamn day, they sending my son home with some shit. Staple to his collar like he in trouble. <laughs> Bitch, that shirt was 30 fucking dollars. Don't be stapling shit to the collar. Because as soon as you take the shit out, it got a little string. Now the whole collar fucked up. And it's the middle of school, sir. And they ain't got no more green school shirts. Bitch, stop stapling shit. Bitch. Don't send shit else home. You been having PTA meetings that ain't coming. Why you keep fucking inviting me? Wasting paper. Then they send a note home. Somebody had ain't got no fucking paper. Well, stop sending fucking notes home. Stapling the collar. Man. What about the transportation, Los? What about the school like bus? You ain't bullshit. Every time you look up, your kid's in trouble for some shit on the bus. Some common sense saying shit that you taught them. You taught them. What happened on the bus? Nigga, black kids get on the bus for knowing how to be black and ride a goddamn bus. Black kids on the bus getting in trouble for having common sense. Look how quiet he got. Can't even send your kids to school on the goddamn bus. They want to send no time. Well, today... Your son was standing up on the bus. Son, why you standing up? Cause I was looking for my seat. Well, how else he was gonna fucking get to it? There it is. All the new parents in here. Who, got, who just had a baby? Any new parents in here? Like this, like you just had like your first baby a couple years ago? Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> New parents get on my nerves. They get so offended so easily because you haven't experienced anything yet. Your kid is brand new. You still like them. <laughs> this lady come up to me one day. She was like, after I had a show, she goes, excuse me, can I talk to you for a second? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I was at your show and you said something about your daughter and you called her the B word. And I just want to let you know that I was offended. And I was like, so? <laughs> you telling me for? <laughs> well, because I have kids and I just want to let you know that I'm a mom and I just thought what you said was, wasn't nice about your child. So I'm like, well, how old is your kid? Well, my daughter's seven and my son, he's 34 months. I'm like, bitch, how old is that? Like, I, <laughs> okay, that's how I know you knew. When you still count your kids in months, you knew, you knew, you a, you a newbie, bitch. Get your ass if you don't get, she don't even know what this hand means. If you don't know what this hand means right here, Parents know what this hand means. This is the who you think you talking to. You would chase your kid. You think I'm playing with you? That's this. She's not a real parent. I said, you ever drove into your driveway and ate your food in the car? <laughs> if you never pulled into your driveway and ate your food in the car, you ain't no real parent. Like, I'm a parent parent. I'm gonna pull into my garage, close the garage door, car still running, carbon monoxide all in the air. I would rather die than share my Chick-fil-A nuggets and lemonade with anybody in this house, because they don't got no jobs. Young boys, what's up with us? Man, we don't like to wash our butt. He just stank. You have, anybody got any 10 to 12, 13 year old? And boys are slow, you got them. What is wrong with us? Girls. You, if you see, my, my cousin brought his daughter over. She the same age as my son. The moment I met her, I was like, I gotta go get my son checked. <laughs> they the same age, she's so organized. She's like, yes, mom, we have to go. I have to be in my meeting at 10 and da 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 da. So I gotta go and finish my assignment. I have something to study. My son is off. <laughs> I tell him to go take a shower. He be like, what I do wrong? I'm like, nigga, this is not a punishment. You gotta do this every day. He think taking a shower is a punishment. He's like, I took one yesterday. I said, you gotta do it. What are they teaching you over there at your mama house, boy? 
and you wouldn't think at a certain age, he's 12, I gotta still walk and see this half a grown butt naked man study because he won't wash up. One time I caught him by the water with his whole clothes on just playing in the water with his hands. I said, what are you doing? He's like, I was gonna take a bath. When? You still got all your clothes on. He said, I was just checking the temperature. The water's fine. Get in there and put some soap on there. You, this, every time he washes his hands, I have to ask him, did you use soap? This is a common, she, she got a, she know, she know my pain. She got a 12 year old. And then he liking girls. I'm like, you can't be stinking and liking girls. That's not, they don't go together, bro. He's named after me. It's just, it's bad. You'd be proud to give your son your name until you start seeing who you're raising. You'd be like, hey, you cannot have my name. Acting like this, I'm gonna take it back. I'm gonna switch your name. Keep playing with me. His name is Barry Bruder III. It's gonna be Benjamin or something. Keep playing with me. I love my son. He wanna go to the NBA, he play ball. I'm like, God gonna have to take you there because that's about it. You, you gotta know your kid. Everybody ain't school driven. I went to the school, they be calling the school, the math teachers like, he just don't bring his books. I'm like, BJ, why do you bring your math book? Why don't you bring a book? He's like, dad, you seen how big the book is? He's like, I didn't know it was so heavy. I didn't think we had to bring it every day. I was like, okay. I walk into English class. He's sitting next to the teacher at her desk. He has his own chair at her desk. I'm like, why are you up there? Are you helping the teacher teach? Why are you at that desk? She's like, I have to keep an eye on him. He doesn't, he got all his items on one of her side of her drawers. Like, here's my tablet. You the slowest. It's COVID, not chlamydia. Y'all can clap. You're not nasty, you just breathe. <laughs> Living life. Yeah, fuck me up. I went to the hospital for a few days. I was scared. I got out the hospital, thought I was okay. And then I uh, lost my smell and taste. Did y'all lose y'all smell and taste too? <laughs> Shit was weird as fuck, right? Cause you don't even think about, you don't give a fuck about smell and taste. You be like, if I could see, <laughs> if I could hear, I'm good. Like, no nigga, you need to smell too. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I was musty as fuck. I didn't even know. I was a little onion walking around this motherfucker. I was sixth grade musty. You hear me? I'm talking about. It was like top tier funk. I don't know what happened when boys turned 13, 14, but y'all stink, okay? I got a 13 year old, he get out the shower musty. I'm like, get your ass, get your ass back in that shower, you stink. I'm like, you gotta start washing up, you're almost 14, your body changing. I thought he was just being lazy, you know, he a boy. So I washed up under his arms for him. Five minutes, Irish spring. Nigga was still musty. I said, oh, you need medicine, okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> we gotta fight this from the inside. God damn, nigga, this is, this is chronic. Nigga, you need a treatment plan. Oh, I felt so bad because he handsome. You know, he goes to school musty. They gonna think I'm a bad parent. No, bitch, his glands fucked up. He has a condition. <laughs> we in the mall, I can't smell shit. He, we in the mall, he like, oh my, you stink. I said, shut up, you stink. He said, no. We <laughs> stank. I said, me too. He like, yeah, welcome to the dark side, bitch. Mm, we fucked Foot Locker up that day, bitch. Just two little onions, back to school shopping. It was <laughs> not a good day. Oh my God, but we here and I'm excited. From the VA, from the jury, my dad was in the Navy. I grew up around everybody. I had black friends, white friends, Asians, others, everybody. You know what I mean? Everybody. That's the only joke he gonna remember. He gonna take that shit to work. This nigga said other. I don't know what else he said. But he said others. I grew up around everybody, man. I got to do all my favorite shit with every ethnicity. That's how you learn about people. Like growing up, my favorite thing to do was sleepovers. Remember sleepovers? Yeah. You got to go to somebody else's house, fuck they shit up, and go home. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever slept over somebody's white house. That shit was amazing. <laughs> they introduced me to Juicy Juice. <laughs> Look, y'all niggas know we ain't never had no goddamn Juicy Juice. <laughs> We had everything else, Huggies, Capri Suns, Kool-Aid, Kool High C, 
<laughs> we even did tag number tang with the little monkey on the bottom. It was a little racist, but it was some good juice. <laughs> They make juicy juice with real fruit. Nigga, I didn't know that. I had an allergic reaction. I was so used to fake fruit. I was pissing out seeds for a week. I didn't know what was going on. Only way for you to learn about people is to be with them. Shit, I learned at white people's house, you can make noise all night and their parents don't get upset. White parents low-key some big kids. They'll hear you playing and get mad. They didn't get an invite. It's three in the morning, we run around Tanner house, all you hear is Tanner daddy go, Tanner, what in Tarnations? I was like, nigga, what is Tarnations? <laughs> Tanner was like, I'm sorry, father, we were just playing tag. He said, God damn it, without me? <laughs> said, I meant one, two, and I just froze in amazement. Cause I had never heard no black parent count up. <laughs> Hell no, nah, but they will count down on your ass. And my mama was so gangster, she'll count and name some shit that better be done in between each number. Then how your mama do the gangster countdown? You got five motherfucking seconds to go to bed before I come in there. I'm whooping everybody ass. That's your ass, your daddy ass, your sister ass. I'm stepping on roaches. I just don't give a fuck. Five. And your clothes better be iron for tomorrow. Four. And your teeth better be brushed. Three. And it better be some gas in my car, but there ain't no gas in my car. <laughs> oh, bitch, I'm in kindergarten. No, they got no <laughs> you learn about people. I got to hang out with white kids. That's why I never wanted to be white. Yeah, I know some of y'all think like, I ain't never going to be, yeah, you did. Growing up black, sometimes you're like, man, if you get a whooping, I mean, white kids don't never get whoopings. Yes, they do, just not as frequently like we do. White kids get cussed out on a spiritual level, though. Black parents cuss you out for the moment. I beat your ass, but if she don't do it, you good. White parents say shit that stick to your soul. You got to sleep on it. I'm at Tanner house one night, his daddy just starts snapping. He was just cut. White parents do this thing where they cuss you out, but they still say some friendly shit at the end. Like, Tanner, I can't believe you would do some bullshit like this, buddy. You really kicked the shitter, pow. Tanner daddy said some shit so gangster, it fucked my night up. I don't know what Tanner did, but Tanner daddy was like, you know what, Tanner, I just can't believe this bullshit. You know what? I bet your grandfather's turning over in his grave right now. I said, damn. <laughs> you know how bad you gotta fuck up with somebody to be dead and be like, man, I can't believe this motherfucker. <laughs> hey, y'all been a lot of fun, man. I'm like, now, I work at a hospital. I work at Kaiser. I'm a, I'm a doctor in my mind, but... <laughs> Physically, I'm a receptionist. All I can do is check you in, that's it. I, don't, it's, I still get free healthcare, I don't care what you say. But I, what I will say, black parents, if you got kids, let's start bringing our kids to the doctor, okay? We gotta start bringing our kids to the doctor. My mama from the South, my mama never brought me to the doctor. My mama believed in gargling with warm salt and water, no matter what the hell was wrong with you. Anybody else? In? You have a sore throat, what would you do? You gargle with some warm salt and water. I was having relationship issues. My mom said, both of y'all get in here. Y'all gargle with this warm salt and water. Y'all go back outside and pray about it. It broke my ankle in three locations. You would have thought I would have had a cast. My mom said, no, Christopher, hop on in here. You see this salt and water? Goggle with it and spit this shit on your ankle and go back outside and play. <laughs> so working at the hospital, I know there's different nationalities. They treat their kids different. Any Latinos in here? Latinos? I'm a, oh my God. Let me tell you something about Latinos. I love y'all. Latinos are the most supportive group of parents you've ever seen. Because when y'all bring y'all kids to the doctor, it's at least 57 family members <laughs> bringing one child to the doctor's visit. They all dressed up as balloons. It's like a quesadilla at the hospital. It's amazing. <laughs> this 
this one father came in and said, hey, sir, um, what's wrong with your child? Hey, we don't know. But our baby been coughing for like one, two, three years now. But they all are supportive, I love it. White parents, any white parents here? See some white people I want to, oh, let me tell you something about, oh my God, I love white parents. Let me tell you something about white parents. Y'all are the most emotional group of parents I've ever seen. <laughs> white parents bring their kids to the doctor. They have more pain than the damn child that they bring in. <laughs> this white mother came in, oh my God, excuse me, sir, is this the urgent care? I, I say, yes, this is, this is urgent care. What seems to be wrong with your child? <sighs> My baby sneezed today. <laughs> Once, yes. I said, you have a $10 copay. She said, here's a hundred, keep the change. Wow. White parents care. The only group of parents that tip at a doctor's visit. I love it. Black parents, totally different. I'm out of here, man. This is how this black mother brought a child to the doctor's office. I'm not playing. She was just like this. Sir, uh, is, is this the urgent care? Yes, this is urgent care. What seems to be wrong with your child? Tell her what's wrong with you! Oh, you can't talk all of a sudden. Okay, anyway, he say his ear hurt. Okay, so was that an earache, ma'am? I don't know what it is, but he's been on a new iPhone all day. His ear must not be hurting that damn bad. Okay, so ma'am, it, it'd be a $5 copay. $5? Okay, what does that come with? Okay, Bill, his father, he don't do nothing no way. He's on his plane. Well, ma'am, we, we, we don't bill anymore. The copays are due at the time of service. Okay, well, how am I supposed to fix my baby's ear, uh, Christopher? Ma'am, calm down. Um, try gargling with some warm salt and water. And my name is Chris Lee. Y'all been great. God bless. Any husbands in the house? Any husbands in the house? Yeah. Just one? I was a cry for help right there. Yeah. Nigga said, come get me, nigga, shit. <laughs> nah, that marriage shit real, man. I've been married for about seven years off and on. I gotta take time off, fuck that. I kill myself fucking with her 24-7, god dang. I take weekends off and the other day I get on, she get on my nerve, I'm out, I ain't got time for this shit, man. But I appreciate it though, she did some shit for me as a man I know I couldn't do for her. Like, this some real shit right here. Like she took on my child from a previous relationship. That's some dope ass shit right there. Like shout out to all the step parents in the house that's loving somebody else's. That's real noble of you. Cause if she had a child from a previous relationship, this relationship would have made it this far, being honest with you. I bring it like my kids now. I got a fake act like I like yours too. And I heard step kids are petty. Guess what? I'm petty too. Fuck wrong too. They got one time to tell me, you ain't my real daddy. Yeah, this ain't your real house either. You get the fuck out whenever you want. You want no package deal, my nigga? I don't love you. Fuck out of here. You ain't that back ass diaper. Shit, I <laughs> Go live with your real daddy, nigga. Shit. He in jail, all right? Well, he got two to five. I guess you're doing two to five, too. Fuck out of here. That's jail for the people that don't. That's jail for my, my non melanin uh, people that Ida was talking about. <laughs> Not nah, melon, if I said it right, I don't know. <laughs> I went to college for a couple semesters, fuck y'all. <laughs> but I don't know if I should let my son move in with me, I'm being honest with you. I know. 
Yeah. I'm being honest, because I was a weekend dad. When you're a weekend dad, that shit easy. Get them on Friday, next you know you're Sunday afternoon. All right, nigga, see you in two weeks. <laughs> That's easy, I can do that, huh? Two days and a half? Oh, shit, let's do it. <laughs> that motherfucker little me every day, this shit is tough, man. I seen him on a Monday for the first time ever in life. I ain't know what the fuck to do. I'm just staring at him. What you doing on Monday? I go to school. I go to school. What are you looking at me for? I need you to take me. Uh, unless you want to be late, you got to figure this out on your own. I don't got to pay to 12 o'clock. Fuck that. Find the bus, get on and see school, get off, my nigga. I ain't got time for this shit. It's too much responsibilities, man, when the kids live with you. He was a weekend dad, all you had to do was just show up for shit, you know. Like my son, he joined the band. His mom called me, oh my God, your boy is in the band, yet he come see him perform. I said, shit, I'm there, I'm a performer. Now my son perform, I gotta go see this. I called my friends, come on, yo, gotta go see my son, he perform. We get up there, they got the, all the kids lined up, and they got all the instruments on the stage. I'm looking at the saxophone, like, yeah, my nigga. <laughs> you gonna be the sexy little nigga and grab the saxophone. You know? Yeah, that nigga walked right by the saxophone like he didn't even see it. I said, shit, all right. Drums, piano, he's still cool, guitar. Nah, he went around that shit too. Oh, my nigga grabbed the flute, shit. Whew, shit. My friend's like, which one is yours? A nigga on a saxophone. What the fuck you talking about, nigga? They said he aged. I said, you a mixed baby, fuck out of here. Shit, that's my boy. I was a little salty when he was on the flute, but then I looked to the far left, I saw a little nigga on a tambourine. I said, well, I'm cool, I'm good, I'm straight. <laughs> little nigga was hyped. <laughs> I said, ooh, they ain't gonna make it shit, man. <laughs> they ain't gonna make it on that tambourine. <laughs> nigga yelled out, who the nigga on the tambourine? I said, that's just some fucked up shit right there. I had that. Then the nigga kept going, who the nigga on the flute? Whoa, whoa, nigga, my mind your business, keep <laughs> Stay on the nigga on the tambourine, shit. <laughs> Leave the flute nigga alone. <laughs> so when he moved in with me, I told him, I said, hey, uh, you gonna put that flute in the trash. Uh, we done with that act. <laughs> you gonna throw that flute away, ply, ply. <laughs> Who the fuck you know that play a flute? That's a professional flute player. Who y'all know? What's that damn name? Exactly, fuck out of here. <laughs> Talk to oh, the all my ass. I don't know, no nigga with a scholarship for the flute. Fuck y'all. <laughs> and it wasn't gonna be my son being the first one. Y'all kiss my ass. Nigga out here doing this shit. The fuck out of here. <laughs> you learn how to fight. It don't matter. They don't fight no more. And the damn sure don't hold to the fight rules. You used to have rules growing up. Fights didn't just break out. It was a rhythm. A build up. You know how fights started, everybody had a role. You said something, he said something back, somebody in the crowd was like, ooh. <laughs> the ooh was like the bell. Ding! <laughs> somebody would repeat what he said, he said your mom. Somebody would give you their opinion about what he said. I wish a nigga would say some shit like that about my mom. Nowadays, these kids already ready to fight. I ain't know it was my turn the other day. Almost got my ass kicked waiting for Uber. You know, young kids, they just, they be vibrating. They, you know, they're already ready. Just snap, what the fuck you looking at? And I was like, Uber come from that way. Never mind, never mind. I let him call me. Fuck it, he'll call me. Hello, John? Yeah, this is me. With my back to you. No, 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 no need to stop, just slow down. Yeah, just slow down, I'll jump in. These niggas is ruthless, they, they kill you. They have rules, man. What just fight, what just beat up, you have rules. Back in the day, OG, motherfucker get you in a headlock, you say you couldn't breathe, what do you have to do? Let you go. Let one of these young Thundercats get you in a fucking headlock with that. R.I.P. nigga, you shouldn't have disrespected me.
I think my biggest fear now too is I don't want to get killed on on video. Like I don't, I don't want my shit to be broadcast because that they do that too. <laughs> they can set it up, put the camera on. <laughs> I don't want no trouble. I want to go home. It's not that I can't fight. You know, if you get into a fist fight, I think I can fight well enough. And well enough, my gentlemen here, older men know what I mean. Well enough till somebody break it up or till the cops come or somebody yell out, get off of him! That's, that's, that's well enough nowadays. You ain't really whooping nobody ass out here. But, you know, come from the fist fight ever. I'm just not sure my body can take fist fights like it used to. That's why we wear all this cool shit, but under it, nigga be girdled up too. <laughs> Remember me having on compressive socks and shit? <laughs> Talk about y'all with body magic. We got the same shit. It's just tights. You call them Nike pads. You're 16, you ain't take no shit. 16, you start a fight by your fucking self. It was hot. He said something about your mama. Good enough. He bought this ass whooping. Hmm? 16, you take a clean punch in the face, still be in the house talking shit like we gonna get that motherfucker later. Get off of me. He didn't even know who he dealing with. Talking big shit. That's because at 16, your eye would be healed later. <laughs> yeah. Get punched in the face at 30 plus. <laughs> Nigga, you gonna miss a couple days at work. You need an MRI, CAT scan. Nowadays they do an EKG just to make sure he ain't fuck your heart up, punching you in your eye. Who the fuck gonna pay this copay? That's 74. That's when you make an adult decision on the pavement, talking about, no, nah, my man gonna drive me to the hospital, because you know the ambulance is 400. Swelling don't go down for months. Spend the rest of your days looking like Forrest Whitaker. I always lose half the crowd on that joke. <laughs> Young folks is with me. They like, yeah, that nigga I is fucked up. I appreciate young people because they do face the truth.